Do you need help making ends meet during the COVID-19 crisis? The City of San Antonio's new Emergency Housing Assistance Program provides assistance to pay for rent, mortgage, utilities, and internet access. As part of the assistance package, cash is available to pay for groceries, medicine, and fuel. To see if you qualify, visit www.sanantonio.gov slash emergency housing assistance or call 311. Cathedral, Church of God in Christ. I don't believe I have a witness, but the Bible says that when praises go up, blessings come down.
Good morning and praise the Lord. Let us bless the Lord for another day and opportunity to praise and magnify God. I am Elder Gonzalez and I'm your MC today. And I will lead you and first uh, we will have our statement of faith. And following that we will have our prayers which will be for Christians everywhere uh, and our nation along with our ministry to win souls by our very own Minister Connor, Elder Hilliard and Elder Carter. And after that, we will have selections from our choir. We say um, amen to that. And now for our statement of faith, I will re recite the leader's part and you will recite the people's part. Our belief concerning the Bible. Our belief concerning God. Our belief concerning church. We believe in the blessed hope, which is the rapture of the church of God, which is the name of Christ at his return. And our belief concerning sin. We believe that the only being clean from sin is sin to repent and faith in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Our belief concerning salvation. We believe that regeneration by the Holy Ghost is absolutely essential for the person of salvation. Our belief concerning Christ. Our belief concerning the Holy Ghost. We believe that the baptism of the Holy Ghost, according to Acts 2 and 4, is given to believers to ask for it. Our belief concerning sanctification. We believe that the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit, by whose indwelling the Christian is able to live a holy and separated life in this present world. Amen. Our ministers are coming at this time, and following that will be in the hands of our choir, and after that we'll have our word presented today by our very own Elder Porter. Amen. Please join me as I lift up prayers for Christians everywhere. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for giving us your power, giving us your spirit, giving us your word. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your guidance. And we lift up your people all over this world. Today, there are people in all sorts of different circumstances. There are people in all different regions, wet and dry, hot and cold, populous and not so populous. But we know that in the midst of whatever circumstances, that those who have dedicated their lives to you, those who have made you their Lord, that you will not leave them and you will not forsake them. So we lift up those who are enduring hardships and difficulties. We lift up those who are in need of healing. We lift up those who are in need of provision. We lift up those who are in need of comfort. We lift up those all around the world who are looking for their next move. What should I do next? How should I handle what I am facing? We pray that for those of us who have means, that you would give us wisdom for blessing those who lack. We pray that for those of us who have peace, that you would give us wisdom for blessing those who are lacking peace in their lives. We pray that you would help us to reach out to those close. Help us to reach out to those who are far. Help us to reach out to those who are like us and help us to reach out to those who are not like us. Lord, whether far or near, whether old or young, whether they speak our language or not. We know that your people belong to you. We know that you have created good works for them to walk in and for us to walk in. We know that we are one body and that your body has many members carrying out your will. So help us to check our hearts so that we can be sure that our hearts line up with your heart. 
so that we can reach out to your people wherever they may be, whatever state they may be in, so that we can be in line with you. Thank you, Lord. Father, many nations know of you, but very few pledge their allegiance to you as we do. So Father, we pray for nations everywhere that may be struggling with accepting you, with, with following you, with seeking your guidance, we're seeking to know your will, and we petition you, God, that you would bless the nations of the world. Father, we're faced with difficulty and trials and struggles, but God, we know if we ask you that you would help us, you would help this nation be a light, help this nation be an example for other nations that they may see your good works in our lives and glorify you as God. We honor you today as a faithful nation, as a nation of believers, as a nation of those that trust in you, as a nation that depend on you. And we call on you out of a sincere heart. God, you've never failed us. You've never forsaken us. You've never let us down. We continue to lean on you and know believing and all things are possible. And so we pray for the nations. We pray for those that are lost. We pray for those that are blind. We pray for those that are bowed down in hatred and animosity and strife and, and greed and in injustice. We pray for nations everywhere, Father. And we believe, God, that as we are the City that sit on the hill, our lights will shine so that others may see your good works. And we trust, God, that you will deliver us from all evil and protect us as a godly nation. We haven't forgot you, God. We still depend on you. Guide us as a godly and faithful nation. We will follow your paths. We ask, God, for your trust, your, your guidance, your deliverance, in Jesus' name. Our God and our Father, we thank you for another day. We thank you for being here. We thank you, God, because you've allowed us, God, to enter your presence one more time. And God, in doing that, we want to give you praise and give you glory and give you the honor because it belongs to you. Father, all the things that we're going through, God, there's still souls that need to be won. Hallelujah. God, there's those on the sick bed that don't know you, God, but we need, oh God, they need you. Ah, oh, Father, and we need to know how to draw them. Well, I heard your word said, will you, you be lifted up? You would draw all men unto you. God, but we are your, we are your spokesman. We are your, 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 your people that goes out, hallelujah, and tell a dying world that you are still alive. Tell a dying world that you are able to lift them from where they are. God, we thank you for what you've done for us. We thank you for how you brought us. We thank you for how you kept us. But God, we need the knowledge and the understanding Oh, God, how to draw people, hallelujah. God, those that won't come to church, hallelujah, you can touch them in their home. God, you can touch them on their jobs. Oh, God, give us the strength and the fortitude to touch, oh, God, to outreach out, to reach out and touch those, hallelujah, that's in a dying state, those that's in a bad condition. God, those that with a mind that's not turned to you. God, we need to know how, God, to speak the word. God, even through the message, don't let it fall on deaf ears, but let it fall on good ground, hallelujah, that somebody might say, I want to be saved. Thank you, Jesus. God, that's your plan, hallelujah. We're saved to save others, hallelujah. But well, God, we need you. We need you, God. 
to be able to speak a word. We need you, God, to be able to talk to the sinner man, be able to talk to those that are unbelievers, to be able to talk to those, God, and cause them to their minds to be changed, cause their heart to be turned around, God, and say, God, what must I do to be saved? God, we need that wisdom, that wisdom come from you. Oh, God, we are here. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Giving you the praise. We're here, God. Giving you the glory because it belongs to you. Oh, God, touch down as we as they hear. Oh, God, touch down and let them be drawn to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you the glory and we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen.
Victory! In His name! Victory! Thank God that we have victory in his name. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come to the today, Lord, to uh, glorify your name, to bless you, and to magnify who you are, and to speak to your people, Father, the words of eternal life, God, that we may know and that we might become more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Giving honor to God. Bishop Aglehart, Mother Yolanda Ford, who is our jurisdictional supervisor of women, Mother Cynthia Chandler, Elder Daniel Watford in his absence, our quorum of elders, my wife, and all God's people. From the Gospel of John, the third chapter, the first through the 18th verses. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter in a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh or whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. Nicodemus answered and said, how can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel? Not, not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto you, We speak that we do know and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you of earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. 
And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. We're going to go back up to verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. It is from that portion of scripture that we shall speak today and do our assignment from the subject, God's love. You may have your seats. God's love. This verse appears on bumper stickers, t-shirts, and placards at sporting events. Perhaps its popularity comes from the succinct summation it provides of the gospel message. It quickly recaps the story of salvation. God's love for humanity, the son's coming to earth to die, and the opportunity we must respond to in faith and receive eternal life. Yet this Valentine's Day, if we are to know love, God's love, which is the template for any kind of love, we must unpack this verse. There are three questions that the preacher must answer. Number one, who is God? Number two, why does God love? And number three, how do we receive his love? Who is God? To fall in love with God is the greatest romance. To seek him is the greatest adventure. To find him the greatest human achievement, says St. Augustine. Genesis 1 and 1 in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Let's slow down for a moment. In the beginning, God. God is the beginning and the ending. He's the subject, the predicate, the imperative. The Bible is a story about him. There is no reality but him. Everything is of him, but not him. Like the sun shines and its rays cannot be deflected, so does God's essence and presence make up all that is or ever shall be. He is omnipotent, which means he's all-powerful. He is omniscient, which means he's all-knowing. He is omnipresent, everywhere present. He is inscrutable. He, he is immutable, I'm sorry. You, he cannot change. He is inscrutable. He cannot be figured out. He is indivisible. He cannot be divided. He's past our understanding. He's holy and altogether different. He is not the man upstairs. He is not my dog and my homie. The songwriter says he dwells in light unapproachable and hid from our eyes. He is glorious. He is love. He is good. He has revealed himself because he wants us to know him. He's revealed himself as Elohim, which is a plurality. He's revealed himself as El Shaddai, which means God Almighty. He's revealed himself as El Elyon, which means the Most High God. 
He's revealed himself as El Rohi, which means God sees. He's revealed himself as El Olam, which means God everlasting. He's revealed himself as El Gibor, which means the mighty God. He's revealed himself as Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord God will provide. He's received himself as Jehovah Rapha, which means the Lord heals. He's revealed himself as Jehovah Nisi, which means the Lord is our banner. And he's revealed himself as Jehovah M. Kadesh, which means the Lord is our sanctification. He's been revealed himself as Jehovah Shalom, which means the Lord our peace. He's revealed himself as Jehovah Rohai, the Lord is our shepherd. He's revealed himself as Jehovah Shama, which means the Lord is there. He's revealed himself as Jehovah Sabaoth, which means the Lord of hosts. And he's revealed himself as Jehovah Sidkenu, which means the Lord, our righteousness. Point two is why does he love? First John 4 and 7 says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. He loves because he chose to. And there's nothing we can do to earn his love, but there's nothing we can do to separate ourselves from his love. Romans 8 tells us who can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Tribulation, persecution, nakedness, peril, sword, nothing is able to separate us from his love. But I need to borrow the scripture in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8, amplified. If I want to know what his love, his divine love is, is all about and what would prompt him to love us so. According to 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, for love endures, it's long and is patient and kind. Love is never envious, nor boils over with jealousy. It's not boastful or vainglorious. It does not display itself haughtily. It is not conceited. Arrogant, inflated with pride, it is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way. For it is not self-seeking, it is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice in injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes it is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Its hopes are faithless under all circumstances and it endures everything without weakening. Love never fails, never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. This is God's love. Why does he love us? He is love. He can't help but love us. And the definition of his name means that because he is all these things and this is what divine love is, he never gives up on us. But how do we receive that love? God, the just, righteous, and true, built into his creation attributes. His creation malfunctioned. It was a perfect creation. For it 
came from himself, who is perfection. How could it be any less than who he is? But how does one who loves save his marred creation? Who could be virtuous enough, just enough, truthful enough, blameless enough to redeem a marred creation? His love, and remember he is inscrutable past our finding out, said, prepare me a body and I will go down and I will redeem fallen creation. And because no one else could, God sacrificed himself. This is God's love. And this brings us to this passage today. And here we see Nicodemus coming to Jesus by night. And Nicodemus, who was one of the leading religious people, he, he knew how to serve God according to the customs of the day. And here he comes, not because he didn't know how to practice the things that were right, but because, like all of us, he had a deep, searching need for significance and understanding of what was going to happen to him. When he came, he began by saying, oh, Jesus, you are great. And no one can do these things except God sent him. But Jesus said, listen, the cru crucial issue of our lives is you must be born again. Born again, Nicodemus says, how do I do that? Do I get back in my mother's womb? A logical response. But Jesus says, no, you don't understand. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit. He said, look here, the wind blows where it wants to go, and so is everyone that is born of the spirit. We don't know where it's going, but we know that it's in operation. Nicodemus says, how can these things be? And Jesus said, listen, do you, you, you're not listening to me. I'm the only one that came down from heaven. I'm the only one that knows what goes on in heaven. And he said, let me tell you how it goes. In Numbers 21 and 9, the children of Israel begin to grumble because they didn't like the way things were. You know, they were getting God's provision. They were getting God's blessing, but that wasn't enough. Uh, they had some trials. Uh, they had manna, uh, but they had hunger. Uh, they had the water of Meribah, but they had thirstiness. Uh, they had shoes that didn't wear out. But, but, but they had an emptiness and a longing in the soul for the things that they came out of. And so therefore, uh, they were grumbling, as we are often doing. They grumbled against Moses, and they grumbled against God. And the Bible says that God sent snakes among them. And the snakes begin to bite them. And when the snakes begin to bite them, the people said, save us. Oh, God, save us. And God told Moses, erect a brazen serpent on a pole. And whoever looks to that serpent will live. But here was a dilemma. The people who were alive were focused on the snakes that were biting them. How in the world could they turn away from what was real and present that was troubling them and turn to the same thing they were struggling with? But Jesus said, just like they did, so must I go to the cross. And on the cross, 
One Friday, Jesus became sin for us. Oh, on the cross one Friday, Jesus died. Oh, he became the brazen serpent for us. He died and took our sins upon him one Friday afternoon because God loves us and he became sin for us so that we might know his righteousness, so that we might know his love, so that he could bring us back into fellowship with him because God loves. And Jesus died. He died until all creation shook. He died until the sun refused to shine. He died until the graves opened up. He died until the veil of the temple which separated one from the presence of God was rent in two. But that wasn't enough. He bore our sins and he satisfied his own justice. He satisfied his own righteousness. He satisfied his own creation. And then he went down into the grave. When he got into the grave, I hear the psalmist say, oh, open up your everlasting door. And they said, who, where is uh, the everlasting door? Who is calling? Who is knocking at the door? And he said, listen, the king of glory is knocking at the door. Open up and let me in. And then those three days, the God who has the life in him, the God who is the creation, the God who is the summation of all things, Death could not hold him. He broke loose and started a revival in hell. And the Bible says he told captivity, come here, I'm taking you home with me. And he got up with all power in his hand. And he said, oh death, where is your sting? Just like the snakes stung the people in numbers, sin stings us. But God says, because he loves us so much on this Valentine's Day, you have to recognize that the entire story is about his love. Would you stand right now? Perhaps there are some of you who, you don't know God. You don't know anything about him. But I want you to know whether you know something about him or not, he loves you. And the very hairs on your head are numbered. I don't care where you are today. He has provided for us a way back to him. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. I believe that you died on the cross. We're buried, and on the third day, God the Father raised you from the dead. Right now, Lord Jesus, I open the door of my, I open the door of my heart, and I receive you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Amen. God bless you.
tell them, say, we are Praise Cathedral, Church of God in Christ. I don't believe I have a witness, but the Bible said that when praises go up, blessings come down.